2 Chronicles chapter 17. Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king and strengthened himself against Israel. He stationed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and put garrisons in Judah and in the towns of Ephraim that his father Asa had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because in his early years he walked in the ways his father David had followed. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the God of his father and followed his commands rather than the practices of Israel. The Lord established the kingdom under his control, and all Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat so that he had great wealth and honor. His heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. Furthermore, he removed the high places and the Asherah poles from Judah. In the third year of his reign, he sent his officials ben Hal, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathanael, and Micaiah to teach in the towns of Judah. With them were certain Levites, Shemaiah, Nathaniah, Zebediah, Asahel, Shemariah, Imoth, Jehonathan, Abonijah, Tobijah, and Tob Adonijah, and the priests Elishama and Jehoram. They taught throughout Judah, taking with them the book of the law of the Lord. They went around to all the towns of Judah and taught the people. The fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the land surrounding Judah so that they did not make war with Jehoshaphat. Wow. Some Philistines brought Jehoshaphat gifts and silver as tribute, and the Arabs brought him flocks, 7,000, 700 rams and 7,700 goats. Jehoshaphat became more and more powerful. He built forts and store cities in Judah and had large supplies in the towns of Judah. He also kept experienced fighting men in Jerusalem. Their enrollment by families was as follows. And they list them. Verse 19, these were the men who served, as, served the king besides those he stationed in the fortified cities throughout Judah. Chapter 18. Now Jehoshaphat had great wealth and honor, and he allied himself with Ahab by marriage. Some years later, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria. Ahab slaughtered many sheep and cattle for him and the people with him and urged him to attack Ramoth Gilead. Ahab, king of Israel, asked Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied, I am as you are, and my people as your people. We will join you in the war. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, First, seek the counsel of the Lord. So the king of Israel brought together the prophets, 400 men, and asked them, Shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Go, they answered, for God will give it into the king's hands. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? Good for him, having wisdom. <laughs> the king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, There's still one man through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. He is Micaiah, son of Imiah. The king should not say that, Jehoshaphat replied. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Bring Micaiah, son of Imiah, at once. Dressed in the royal robes, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, were sitting on their thrones at the threshing floor by the entrance to the gate of Samaria with all the prophets prophesying before them. Now Zedekiah, son of Kenana, had made iron horns and he declared, This is what the Lord says, With these you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the other prophets were prophesying the same thing. Attack Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, they said, for the Lord will give it into, your king, into the king's hand. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, as one man the other prophets are predicting success for the king, let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what my God says. When he arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Attack and be victorious, he answered, for they will be given into your hand. The king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd, and the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, 
Didn't I tell you that he never prophesies anything good about me, but only bad? Micaiah continued, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the host of heaven, standing on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, who will entice Ahab, king of Israel, into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this, another suggested that. Finally, a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked. I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouths of his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Keniah, went up and slapped Micaiah in the face. Which way did the spirit from the Lord go when he went from, spe went from me to speak to you? He asked. Micaiah replied, you will find out on the day you go hide in the inner room. <laughs> what a great response. <laughs> The king of Israel then ordered, take Micaiah and send him back to Ammon, the ruler of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, this is what the king says, put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. But he just prophesied that he wasn't going to return safely, which was a big doom for the prophet. Micaiah declared, if you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, mark my words, all you people. That's sad. <laughs> so the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. To me, it's sad that Jehoshaphat requested a prophet of the Lord and then didn't listen to him, which is, that's really sad. Now the king of Aram had ordered his chariot commanders, do not fight with anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, this is the king of Israel. So they turned to attack him. But Jehoshaphat cried out, the Lord, and the Lord helped him. God drew them away with him. For when the chariot commanders saw that he was not the king of Israel, they stopped pursuing him. But someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the sections of his armor. The king told the chariot driver, wheel around and get me out of the fighting. I've been wounded. All day long the battle raged and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot facing the Arameans until evening. At sunset, he died. Chapter 19. When Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, returned safely to his palace in Jerusalem, Jehu the seer, the son of Hanani, went out to meet him and said to the king, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this, the wrath of the Lord is upon you. There is, however, some good in you, for you have rid the land of the Asherah poles and have set your heart on seeking God. Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem, and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and turned them back to the Lord, the God of their fathers. He appointed judges in the land in each of the fortified cities of Judah, he told them, consider carefully what you do because you are not judging for man, but for the Lord who is with you whenever you give a verdict. Now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Judge carefully for with the Lord our God, there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. In Jerusalem also, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites, priests, and heads of Israel, families to administer the law of the Lord and to settle disputes. And they lived in Jerusalem. He called them, he gave them these orders. You must serve faithfully and wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. In every case that comes before you from your fellow countrymen who live in the cities, whether bloodshed or other concerns of the law, com commands, decrees, or ordinances, you are to warn them not to sin against the Lord. Otherwise, his wrath will come on you and your brothers. Do this and you will not sin. Amariah, the chief priest, will be over you in any matter concerning the Lord. And Zebediah, son of Ishmael, the leader of the tribe of Judah, will be over you in any matter concerning the king. And the Levites will serve as officials before you. Act with courage and may the Lord be with those who do well. Chapter 20. 
After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Menuites, I'm sorry, Moonites, came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you in Edom from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazan Tamor, that is in Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built it in a, a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now... Here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not follow, allow Egypt to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us up, drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came oops, came upon Jehazel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattiah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph. As he stood in the assembly, he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. <laughs> Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruo. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who was invading Judah, and they were defeated. <laughs> wow. Wow. His plan was to send the singers out, not the fighters out. He sent the singers out, and they went out and worshiped. And, the, and God fought for them. They won. <laughs> they won by, sin, by sending out Judah first. That's so good. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. <laughs> when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies laying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. 
On the fourth day, they assembled in the Valley of Barakah, where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the Valley of Barakah to this day. Barakah means praise. <laughs> yes. Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lutes and trumpets. The fear of God came upon all the kingdoms of the countries when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. So Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king of Judah, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother's name was Azubah, daughter of Shilhai. He walked in the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The high places, however, were not removed, and the people still had not set their hearts on the God of their fathers. The other events of Jehoshaphat's reign from beginning to end are written in the annals of Jehu, son of Hanani, which are recorded in the book of the kings of Israel. Later, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, made an alliance with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who was guilty of wickedness. He agreed with him to construct a fleet of trading ships. After these were built at Ezion Geber, Eliezer, son of Dodavahu of Merashah, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have made an alliance with Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy what you have made. The ships were wrecked and were not able to set sail to trade. It's too bad. It sounds like Ahaziah was a good man. Just, yeah. <sighs> Too bad. But today's a great day. <laughs> Have a great day.